I think it's a good idea, Dino. Using your video camera. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Black. Oh, look at this. I was thinking before you came, my nine-year-old granddaughter and I, Scott bought two of these and broke one and so we started putting two of them into one. We had so much fun with such a simple, cheap little thing. And it reminds me of, of course, photography. You can, you can manipulate, you can frame, you can focus different ways, you can wait for the timing. And it's like changing this, customizing this airplane. And you have a wonderful product. But look what she gave me this time. Can you believe that? Can you believe that I was lucky enough to get the focus right that quick? You ever try to f f photograph a nine-year-old <laughs> and try to manually focus on them? They're, they're like bees, they're all over the place. Real quick, like boot camp. It's his. See you guys. Bye. Good luck, you know. Nice yeah, day. thank you. Thanks. My day yesterday? Yes. It was great. I went and worked on my boat and did a lot of writing for me. I'm writing a book about Oliver's car. I'm writing three or four books at the same time, do you know? I'm writing the one about the tramps. And I'm, I'm starting a new one last night on the Victoria Station situation. And I think Book form is probably one of the best ways for a photograph to live. Guys that think they're tough, you pull that out, you don't need a gun. It's diving gear. It's my mask, it's my snorkel. German invention, you know. Put it on their submarines, kill a lot of people. Why do you have it here? Oh, well, you never know when you might need it. I saw a guy lying in the gutter the other day. I put that on. <laughs> <laughs> Where would you like to go? You know, somewhere near Broadway. Sure. I like the quote. I forget who it was that said, the more I learned to photograph, the more I realized how unimportant it was where you photographed. It doesn't really matter where you photograph. Hey, how you doing today? Yeah, I remember you from last year. <laughs> Everybody's friends, see? But here, this is easier than street photography, this situation. The people are preoccupied, it's their day off, they're having a good mood, they're looking at fruit. I appear to be doing the same thing, so I can get much, much closer in a crowded atmosphere of easygoing people, see? I won't have any problem here today. I'm overexposing by a couple of stops just so I have information in the shadows. This is very difficult light to work in, but Street photographers really don't care about which light to work in. They work whatever light is there, and they make the best of it. Sometimes we sacrifice quality, get a faster film. So we're looking for gestures, or we're looking for something like that, too. Look at a brand new car. 
empty street. Take advantage of the empty street. The gesture, the finger, another gesture. Beautiful. Oh, well, it's not beautiful. I took it. How can it be beautiful? It's a start, though. Now, well, how can I change it? I've got that. But the situation changes. Maybe I can get closer and make believe I'm interested in something over there so I don't disturb the mother's hand. I think I should get back a little farther. I've got that one. Let's see what it looks like from back here, if it's still going on. But you see how quickly subject presents itself? Use the emptiness. I, maybe I should have gotten that bicycle as it went by, but I didn't. The little car. Beautiful, touching scene. There is subject everywhere, but don't let it go. You've got those shots, but keep working. Maybe even making contact with the subject. Does somebody have a brand new car? No. Huh? Um, Christmas. <laughs> oh boy, isn't that beautiful? I bet it's got a horn too. Huh? Oh yeah, you got a horn, right? <laughs> Showing your horn? Oh, that brings back memories. That's wonderful. Have a wonderful day. Nobody gets hurt. What a joy of life. My gosh, how does it get any better than that? Where did that come from? Did you arrange that? <laughs> okay, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Terrible lighting. Use that to your advantage. Ah, someone at the bar. I don't know. Not enough there. What are we looking for? What exists? Relaxation on a sunny day. Is everybody having a good time? I'm the new head waiter here. Anything you want from now on is free, okay? You just tell me. All right, perfect. I'll get 10 more of these. <laughs> I focused on the beer. What are you doing focusing on the beer for? You focus on the skin. Hey. How you doing? Good. Are you getting enough beer? Yeah. We're going to give you free beer from now on. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm the new head waiter. We're trying to photograph people, how they're affected by the beer. Okay. You know, so keep drinking, keep drinking, and then maybe later we'll get some action shots. Okay. <laughs> it's so much fun to keep it light. Street photography has its own set of problems as against documentary photography. Much, much different. In street photography, you're dealing with people that are not prepared to see you at all. You are the standout, especially if you have a bag and you've got the menacing camera or you're trying to hide it or you're standing out or you're frowning like most of us do when we're trying to concentrate. You can't do that in street photography without getting in trouble, I find. So you have to soften it up a little bit and you have to meet the conditions and bend with the conditions. These people perceive a photographer with a bag and a sneaky look and a big camera, they perceive them badly. And you can get into big trouble if there's an argument here and there's a lot of people around. So you keep a low profile like me. I'm an old man whose doctor told me to get exercise and take up a hobby. I got the shoes, just the one camera. I got a couple of rolls of film in my pocket. I got my notebook. And I'm walking around, presumably on my day off or I'm retired. I'm no threat to anybody. I got a painted on smile all day. I'm very enthusiastic. I look like a guy who's on vacation having a great time. And everybody likes to see somebody like that. So I don't get in trouble. Plus, I'm prepared for just about any scenario that happens to me. If someone runs up and says, hey, you take my picture, I'm ready for him. I can throw him right to the ground with words. No problem at all. I just prepare myself for any kind of a scenario that's happened to me over 45 years. You know, oh yeah, I used to live in this neighborhood. Is that the same store? Is that, that was that bad? You know, and you take over the conversation. But it's nicely, you're doing it nicely and you're a little bit nutty, maybe even a little bit drunk. 
but you're softening the situation so no one gets hurt, no one gets bothered about Most it. Most people are afraid of being perceived as weird. Who the average it? photographer wants to be perceived as intelligent or a normal person or As an artist, an artist at work. Don't bother them, they're creating that kind of an attitude. It turns people off. You're one of the people. Brisson told us everything. He said, you must be a part of what you photograph. You're one of the guys. You just got off work here. It's, this is lunchtime and you got the camera and you fool around with the rest of the guys. You're just everybody's friend, that's all. And you happen to have a camera. So how do, how do they uh, initiate that personality if they've always been reserved their whole life or shy? How, how do they get away from, from their current personality that can't be like you're describing? If you really enjoy photography and you really believe in it, you want to be a service to photography. And you know, it's funny, Diane Arbus, as troubled as she was, she said something very profound. We are professional strangers. Act in a professional manner. Act the way you think photography should be done with dignity and respect and, uh, and trying to do a good job for humanity and try to give back to photography. And you think about that. And then more you think about that, you realize how more important this is. It's bigger than you. You have to go by the code that you think photography represents, like my three photographers, Bazan, Frank, and Smith. You get your own and you combine them if you really agree with everything they said, and you find that, and you go that route. And to me, this is the most important route I can go. I tell you, these cameras are rugged. They'll oh! What are you doing right now? Thinking about doing something positive. <laughs> Waiting for my burger. Uh, what kind of burger are you having? The nickel burger that costs ten dollars. <laughs> I tell you what I'm thinking about. How easy it is for me to talk to someone for thirty seconds and maybe give them something of value that they can use in their photography. Something that took me 45 years to learn. But I can tell it to them in 30 seconds and it will save them maybe a couple of years of, of labor and study. That's a nice thing to have and I don't care if it's a photographer or a carpenter. An older carpenter can save you an awful lot of time by telling you some shortcuts or some facts of life about carpentry. It's true in any profession or any endeavor. There's always someone who has studied it and worked in it a lot and they can hand down some good tips to the other people. <laughs> and that's what gives me a lot of pleasure is, is helping out, especially the young people, you know? Everything about this is positive. It's all positive. The intent is a positive thing. It's a gift to the world. That's a wonderful thing. That's a positive thing. You're giving a gift of knowledge this is probably the highest art form there is. You never know what the subject is. It can have such tremendous repercussions. It can stand history. It can explain history. And then it's done so quickly. But after years and years of study... <laughs> Anybody can do it. You just have to have self-respect and a good code of ethics. And a logical work schedule and study schedule and research schedule. It's very difficult work.